You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, stocktwits.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the optionsinsider.com. The Options Insider Radio Network is sponsored by Fidelity Investments. At Fidelity, you always get a great value for your options trades. And with powerful investing tools, Tools that provide clear next steps, plus independent research and a wide range of investment types. We can help you make better trading decisions. Learn more about options trading with Fidelity at fidelity.com backslash options. Options trading entails significant risk and is not appropriate for all investors. Certain complex option strategies carry additional risk. Before trading options, contact Fidelity Investments by calling 800-544-5115 to receive a copy of the characteristics and risks of standardized options. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC, member NYSC SIPC. And now, it's time for the show that breaks down the options market. From unusual activity alerts to market analysis, strategy overviews, listener questions, and much more. If it involves puts and calls, then our all-star panel will break it down. It's time to hit the option block. With your host, Mark Longo from the Options Insider Media Group and co-hosts Uncle Mike Tussaw from RCM Asset Management, Andrew the Rock Lobster Joe Venazzi from OptionFit.com, and Mark the Greasy Meatball Sebastian from OptionFit.com. And now, get ready to hit the Option Block. All right, everybody. That music means it is time once again for a little show we like to call around these parts. The options block. A little bit of wit, a little bit of wisdom, a little bit of analysis, a little bit of unusual activity, a whole bunch of your questions. Stir them all together. You got the option block. My name is Mark Longo from the optionsinsider.com, as well as, of course, from the ever-exciting Options Insider Radio Network. You guys know how to get at us on this program every Monday and Thursday, noon central, 1 p.m. Eastern on the old Mixlers or wherever the heck you like to download your podcast after the fact. We don't judge. Just check it out. And, of course, make sure, however you listen, send in your questions, your comments, your insights, your pearls of wisdom. We do indeed enjoy hearing from you guys. And joining me on the old program today, let's see who we got. Let's go out to the Fidelity Hot Seat first because he hasn't been on with us in a while. We are joined once again by Mr. Colin Songer from the Active Trader Strategy Desk over there. Colin, welcome back to the show. It's been a while. You remember how to do this, sir? I'm a little rusty, but I'll get back into the swing of things. It's definitely been a while, but thanks for having me back on. <laughs> well, we're happy to do it. Uh, you, sounds like everyone over there is taking serious vacation in Fidelity Land, so it's a it's an active rotation of uh, you guys uh, fighting your way back on to the hot seat. And also joining us from a little bit closer to home, though we don't we never know quite where he is. He could be in the in the Option Pit slash Carmen Line World headquarters. He could be out in scenic and sunny Riverside, the town that, as he terms it, has just changed all of human life as we know it. Or indeed, he could be at a Costco near you. Let's find out. He's the Greasy Meatball, Mr. Mark Sebastian from OptionPit.com by way of Carmen Line Capital. Mr. Meatball, welcome back to the show. And where are you today, sir? I am watching the rain pour down from the 30th floor of uh, our offices on LaSalle Street. And uh, boy, what a cruddy day it is. Uh, it's uh, the only thing gloomier than the, the weather outside is the lack of volatility in the market. That sounds about right. I wish I could see the weather, but I'm, of course, deep in the bowels of the studio here where they don't permit such things as, as windows. That would be, a, that would be frivolous. It, it, it defeats the sound. So, no, I, I'm deep in the bowels. It could be, uh, could be thunderstorms. Could be frozen. Could be who knows what the heck's going on out there. We have no idea because uh, we're here, committed to making the audio 
for you, listeners. And last but not least, let's see how committed he is. Let's find out. He is the one and only Uncle Mike Tussaud from the appropriately named St. Charles Wealth Management. Uncle Mike, welcome back to the program, sir. Always happy to be here, and uh, sun's starting to come out here in St. Charles, so maybe you guys are going to get some better weather in the next hour or so. I expect nothing less, because, you know, once, once the bad weather comes, they just turn on the weather shield in St. Charles, and everything is right with the world again. Let's see if everything's right with the market as we keep on rolling right on into the trading block. It's time to break down the latest topics, trades, and trends in the world of options. It's time for The Trading Block. All right, everybody. Welcome to the block of trading that is The Trading Block. And coming into today's show, as Mr. Mr. Meatball alluded to, the markets, uh, or I should say the, the weather, it's kind of garbage. The markets, eh, can't really call them garbage. Bit of red on the screen, but not exactly a bloodletting out there. Uh, the Dow and the NASDAQ kind of fighting for number one place to the downside, fighting off between three-tenths and about a third of a percentage point. But again, not a huge wipeout. We're seeing the S&P kind of the laggard down around a tenth of a percentage point or so. A gold taking a bit of a lift up about uh, about a third of a point. So again, third is the magical number there today. And uh, crude actually taking it off a little bit, back down to the mid-50-50 handle, which is interesting, 55 Surprising given all the news coming out of there, of course, if you like crude, stay tuned. After the option block for Twyfa, we'll be joined by Eric Norlin, a senior researcher over there, senior economist over there at CME. He's got a lot of great research. To, do oil skew? Does it really matter? And all that kind of good stuff. Uh, we'll get into all of that in a little bit, of course. And uh, coming into today's show, of course, we're seeing uh, VIX was getting a little bit of a lift, VIX cash. Uh, it's still up a bit, but not a ton. Uh, let's see. It's about. It was at about 14 and a quarter right before short time. At about a 14 handle right about now. So it's up a little over a handle from where we were this time last show. Our old friend VVIX also up a little bit, up around about 87 or so. So up slightly, a fraction of a point. But pretty much close to where it was this time last show as well. And our old friend VXX. Uh, getting a little bit, all three vol process, getting a little bit of a lip, but not a ton, up to about 23 and a half. Getting back some of that precious, juicy erosion uh, that you guys love so much. So we're resetting that erosion clock so you guys can be super excited. Uh, speaking of super excited, he's always excited when he's on the show. So let's go to him first. Uncle Mike, sir, our permable, our apple devotee, our silver collar guru extraordinaire. What is What is catching your eye out there in today's market, sir? Well, I think the big thing that's catching my eye, at least from what I watch, is uh, this uh, shiny silvery thing. Uh, oh, yeah, silver. <laughs> um, silver's been rallying quite a bit the last week or so. And uh, today, it's uh, at least looking at SLV, it made a run at the highs of the year. Still didn't quite touch them. But silver is one that uh, it's interesting. I always, just, the way I like to describe silver, it'll bore you to death, uh, but it'll kind of just come out of nowhere like a thief in the night a lot of times, and uh, that's kind of what it's been doing the last week. Uh, so definitely have uh, silver on the radar, seeing that go up. I think today's going to be a pretty interesting close just because of the fact that we're knocking on the door of the, the high of the year, and with that happening, um, it'll be interesting to see if we can break it, make a run at it, or uh, close above it. So that's definitely something that's going to be on my radar for the rest of the day today. Uh, Apple, of course, above the 200 mark again. Uh, and then uh, with uh, the Dow is down, uh, not a huge amount, but is down a little bit. S&P is roughly flat, had a little bit more of a downturn earlier in the day, but it's uh, bounced back from that. Uh, overall, that's what's on my radar at this point, and uh, uh, just... This is going to sound kind of weird, Mark, but uh, if we get a little bit more movement in silver, uh, I actually looked at doing a move in silver today. I almost did it, but it, it's still not quite enough for me to do something. But uh, I may do a move in silver if we keep going higher next week. We'll see. I don't know, but I might have some silver action for you next week. Uh -oh. The biggest uh, Fingers letdown crossed. of all time is the silver action I thought was going to happen. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Never have I been promised so much. And delivered so little on a, on a trade before, sir. But well, fingers crossed, not quite thiefy in the nighty enough yet for Uncle Mike listeners. But stay tuned. Maybe maybe silver will hit those much vaunted, much ballyhooed levels. And we'll get some action. Maybe a roll. Maybe an adjustment. Who knows? Stay tuned. Stay glued to the old radio dial to find out. Let's go back to the land of the old hot seat 
Colin, it's a somewhat quiet, slightly downside day over here on the old street. What are the Fidelity folks, the Fidelity masses, what are they up to today, sir? Yeah, so when we jump onto the website, uh, going to our uh, stock research page, take a look at the orders by customers. Uh, Some of these are very familiar names, um, but interesting enough, top in the list, I was not surprised, obviously, is Netflix. You know, dealing with the earnings announcement, you know, uh, subscriber miss, they're down 11% um, uh, on the day from that announcement. So that's really kind of leading the way to about 322.62. So uh, still down about that 11%. Interesting enough, it's below all its moving averages now. You know, that 20, that 50, and 200 represent short-term, intermediate, and long-term. So it actually hasn't really been around this level since January of this year. Interesting enough, when you take a look at the uh, uh, call-to-put ratio for volume, it's one spot 29 to 1. Uh, versus the 90-day average of the uh, call to put ratio being one spot three seven to one, uh, so uh, just slightly under that mark. Uh, Amazon taking up that second spot. Um, now, with Amazon coming down the line, uh, right now it's it's still above all its moving averages, uh, down about one and a half percent to 1960 spot nine seven. Um, and this is just after it recently created a, a new 52-week high on July 11th. Uh, so the volume called to put ratio stand at one spot two five to one, versus its 90-day average of one spot three one to one. Uh, so just just slightly under that mark. AMD seems to be a common name that keeps popping up here, and it, it will continue to do so. And this is after an uh, analyst downgrade. Uh, they're citing September quarterly shipments tracking down. Right now, AMD is down about two and a half percent to thirty-two spot seven seven. Um, so it's above all its moving averages, uh, and it created a new fifty-two week high just just two sessions ago, two trading sessions ago. Um, now the volume for the call to put ratio is stand at two spot zero nine to one versus a ninety day average of one spot seven three to one. Uh, so it is just above that mark there. But I do have a curveball for everyone because we always got to have at least one. And I know everyone's heard this, which is Co-Diagnostics Incorporated. That's right, C-O-D-X. Everyone, I'm sure, is following that. My favorite. I have it on my watch list Uh, right now, sir. There you go. So uh, they've they've come through showing some favorable results of a study for their um, co-primers, which provide high-performance detection of cancer mutations and uh, liquid biopsy samples. Uh, so it's actually popped above its 200-day moving average, uh, but it sold back off below it. The interesting part about this is that it closed below a dollar per share um, yesterday uh, and is up 39% to a dollar $1.34 per share, which is actually closer to 50%. Uh, so... Last one taken in is Microsoft. Now, Microsoft is releasing earnings after the market closed here today. Um, I, it's right now down 0.9% to 135 spot 05. Uh, it's currently below its 20-day moving average, but it's above its 50 and 200. Um, and it just created a 52-week high three sessions ago. Now, the call-to-put ratio on this is one spot one seven to one compared to its 90-day average of one spot seven eight to one. So it's, it's much lower than its average, which I, I found to be interesting. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out because we have that earnings release coming out today. And that's what the Fidelity customers are trading today. A little bit of something for everyone there, a little bit of the old Widowmaker getting itself as wings clipped a little bit. I think people have been waiting for that that type of type of announcement out of Netflix for a while, you know they've been managing to to buck the expectations and continuing to grow subscribers in the face of growing competition. Things like the forthcoming Disney platform and everything else It's more expensive. They're losing a lot of their you know deals they used to have as a result. So it's getting more expensive. People are fighting, bidding up the cost of content, and there's new competitors on the horizon. Not usually a bullish chart. Netflix has managed to buck that trend until this past announcement when they. Pretty much posted one of their first uh, subscriber losses in some time, if not ever. I'll have to go check the 
check the numbers to make sure on that. But it's, no, it's been quite some time that they haven't uh, reported that. So people are sticking their, sticking their, their hooks into to Netflix as a result here today. Uh, coming off, it's about off about 40 handles, or about 11%, 322.90, a little bit of the way into showtime here. Speaking of which, not surprisingly, it is uh, kind of dominating our tape here today. Let's do a quick uh, rundown of what's lighting up the markets, and we'll get to uh, the greasiest of meatballs here. Number 10, Facebook. Facebook taking a bit of a drubbing on the Hill this week. I believe one of the uh, a congressmen re- c- compared their forthcoming cryptocurrency to Al-Qaeda using <laughs> Airplanes to crash into the the Twin Towers. I'm not sure how they make that mental leap, but either way, not exactly a good PR week for them. Facebook on number 10, 115,000 contracts on the tape. Number nine, good old Beamer, IBM back on the radar, 117,000. Number eight, Baba, a buck 24 on the tape. Number seven, NVIDIA, the former crypto canary in the coal mine. Now, your guess is as good as mine, buck 35, though, on the tape today. Number six, Amazon, a buck 64. Number five, GE, 177,000 contracts. Number four, good old Softy. The aforementioned softy, the only $1 trillion name left, or at least coming up to report earnings, with coming up to uh, soon, with 217,000 contracts on the tape. Numero trace here, Apple, 219, a rare drop out of the number one spot. Number two, AMD. AMD's been lurking in this top three. It's not number one recently. It's been lighting up the tape of late. 253,000 contracts. Number one, you guessed it, Netflix, about 450 on the tape coming in today. Let's see, the most biased paper we got here in our top ten, Looks like it's a pretty close horse race between Facebook and AMD with 68 and 69% of their paper. Coming on the call side there, interesting stuff. Really quickly, let's look at the broad markets as well. VIX, about a little shy of a quarter of a million contracts on the tape, ADV 441. SPY, a little bit shy of a million contracts. Again, this was coming into Showtime, ADV about two and a quarter. SPX, a little bit shy of half a million contracts on the tape, ADV about one and a quarter million. The Qs, about a quarter of a million contracts on the tape as well, ADV 582 and the Russell, aka IWM, buck 20 on the tape. 304,000 is the old ADV. All this a long way around to getting back to the meatball. Sir, what's lighting up your radar today on this relatively volatile? It's got a little bit of vol coming back in, but relatively vol free day, sir. Yeah, but the only vol that we have out there is in um, silver, where, uh, you know, VXSLV is actually at a 52 week high. So as we're hitting the 52-week high for, um, you know, getting near that 52-week high for silver, vol is through the roof, and it's all related to the two calls. There's a, you know, when you see underlyings popping and, and the vol popping, so, um, you know, just to put things in perspective, um, the, uh, you know, vol's up in three days about... Oh, seven points. So call it 50%. Yes, I'm going to say 50% in, uh, in a matter of three days, which is pretty, uh, pretty impressive. Wait, did you just quote percent of percent to me, sir? I just you did. did. You're just the, did. you're the last of the Mohegans I did that for you. dying on that hill, sir. And you did it to me. Oh, interesting. Interesting. I'll mark this on my calendar I know, today. I know how much you love that. Um, but really it's up about seven points. Um, and so, you know, that's been kind of an interesting one. Amazon getting kind of punched. Netflix has a, uh, some problems. They, uh, I think they finally figured out a price point where people say, fat, it's not worth it, um, especially with them losing content. I, I think their pricing proposition when they have all the Disney content and NBC content and everything is really worth it. But with everything stripped out, the office – uh, all Marvel, Star Trek, uh, Parks and Recreation, uh, Friends. I don't know if they have Friends or not. Um, you know things like that. I, am I going to keep my? I know. Am I going to keep my metro, uh, Netflix subscription for Stranger Things and Fuller House? Uh, the answer for me is no. Now some people really like it, but and and they'll continue to be subscribers, but. Um, I, I think that they're, they've developed a platform that is going to be uh, less appealing to to uh, guys that go uh, after kind of traditional like bro type stuff like Marvel Universe and Star Trek uh, and, or Star Trek Star Wars, and uh, that that could present present a real p- problem because you know bros are mostly just sitting at home watching movies on Netflix. They're on their Tinder app, broing out. They're uh, they're ha- having their beers. They're they're puffing on a jewel, 
and uh, broing out on Netflix, waiting to see if anybody swipes right. And by the way, rarely do they ever swipe right. Um, but that that they're in danger of losing that client, and uh, and I think that could be that's what Netflix ha- uh, real problem is. Uh oh. Losing the bro market, the much coveted. You no, know, you hear the eighteen. <laughs> Everyone wants the bro market. You hear the, you hear the eighteen to thirty-five market. You hear the boomers. You hear the millennials. You never hear the bro market quoted too often. You know, that's a lost bit of data out there. I think maybe you could lead the charge in that regard. Maybe become a demographer for the bro market. What do you think, Mister Sebastian? Yeah, I mean, the, the bro market is is the biggest is the biggest market out there for um, for like stuff that bros like. Which is action movies, and I don't know what what else do bros like. I'm asking my intern. He's 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 kind of, he's like a, a quasi bro. I was just at Wrigley yesterday. I was in the heart of the bro market. Up you there. oh so. really? You're in the, the heart of the bro market <laughs> on National Hot Dog Day. A good day uh, to be up there. I figured you'd be all over Netflix though for Stranger Things. It's nothing but one giant '80s I, reference. I do like Stranger Things. That's like the the one show I am still really watching on that. Um, but, you know, how many more good seasons? And, and I do love it with all the 80s references and everything, all the video games. Dig Dug. Who doesn't love Dig Dug? Um, but uh, I'm not sure that, that that's going to be enough to, to hold all the – you know, I'm an old bro, not a young bro. So that could be – Coveted. You know, maybe that will help with the old bros. But Coveted not the young, young bros. bro market. Uh, but you're right. Yeah, you know, it is kind of fast. Some of this data coming out on Netflix, they, you know, they, there's a reason why they spent all that stupid money on Friends last year because – People spend all this money for Netflix, and all they watch is Friends. <laughs> you yeah. could watch Friends eight million Friends other and ways. Parks and Recreation. And yeah, and, and The Office. The and, Office is the, the office. other one they all watch. And, and they're yeah. losing two out of three of those. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of like funny. You go, people go to Taste of Chicago here, the world's biggest food festival, and they eat pizza and things they could eat anywhere else in the world. They don't taste new things. People pay for Netflix, and they watch Friends in The Office, things they could watch many other ways and probably have already seen. But say lovey. That's, that's what, what people are into. Let's see what we're into from an earnings perspective. Remember, you got a hot new report Hitting the, hitting the website, theoptionsinsider.com from our friends over there at Orats pretty much right after the showtime, a little bit after. So it'll be hot off the presses soon. You're getting a little bit of a, of a free early glimpse here if you're listening to the show live. So a little bit of a benefit for you live listeners. A bunch on this report go and hit the site really soon here, including, let's see who we got here. We've got some names you may have actually heard of, like Amazon. They're reporting uh, next week. They're just a tick under 2,000 coming into this report time. They're pricing in about a 6% move. Uh, past moves have averaged about 4%, so a little bit rich maybe compared to uh, past move. Tesla on the 24th, they're about 255 Man, look at that, that 200 handle well in the rearview mirror for them. They're pricing in nearly 10%, 9.5%. Past moves have averaged about 6%. They've, uh, they've kind of truncated and kind of broken down these earnings movie ports a little bit to make them even easier for you guys to analyze. So look forward to that. Facebook pricing in, they're at about 202 coming into the report time, pricing in about a 7%. And they've averaged about a 5.5%. So it looks like a little bit of a theme here. Is that uh, maybe a little bit of some richness to the straddles? Alphabet and the Google L both uh, pricing about a 4.5%. And they both average about 3, 3.3%. So a little bit rich there as well. Intel, about 50 bucks coming into report time. 6.1%. And they've averaged about a 5%. Let's see. Good old S-Bucks. Let's see. S-Bucks next week as well. 90 and a quarter at, at as of press time. About 5% on the straddle. They've averaged 3.3%. And we were just talking Softy earlier. They are after the bell today. Softy, uh, buck thirty-seven as of their time of this report here. They were pricing in five point three percent. They've averaged two point nine percent, so pretty rich. Uh, not quite a doubling, but pretty close there for what. This is kind of what we've been saying of late. It's interesting to watch. And Microsoft did outperform not too long ago, and pretty dramatically, about a three x to four x their straddle. Then they've kind of been quiet ever since. Maybe, maybe some of that's still baked into this straddle price. Either way, interesting stuff here. You can break it all down for yourself. There are dozens, if not hundreds, of tickers here available for you guys to sink your teeth into over there at the brand spanking new, theoptionsinsider.com. Meanwhile, though, we got to keep on rolling. It's time to get a little odd, a little bit weird, a little bit wild. It is time for the odd block. It's time to break down the most interesting, unusual, and downright questionable options activity that's been identified by TheOptionsInsider.com. It's time for The Odd Block. All 
let's kick things off with a, a recap, actually, of a, of a trade we just kind of profiled a week ago, but it was a weekly trade. You want to check it out? This is a bit of a, of a funky one. Mr. Meeple, I'm sure you've probably seen these things. There's one not that far from you. I'm talking about Carvana. Have you seen these, these giant car, uh, car vending machines? There's one out west there in the Lombard kind of Downers Grove area. Not that far from you. Have you seen one of these things? Mr. Meatball is pulling a rock lobster impersonation and has muted himself. Uh, so we will, we will dig him back up. And Bob, I think the rock lobster, as I referred to, he, he missed it. He had not seen one. Of course, he's up in Maine, so I don't think they have a lot in the way of Carvana car vending machines here on the show. Are you there now, Mr. Meatball? I am. I, right. uh, I had to go. I was eating an Italian sub sandwich ah. and with some nice, delicious jardinier on it. <laughs> and then I, uh, I made the mistake of touching my eyes, so I had to go wash my hands and wash my eyes. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. So, <laughs> first rule of radio, don't touch your eye after eating hot peppers. That's just the first rule. I have to take myself. Yeah, that's a, that's yes. a first rule for life. Sounds like Colin has, uh, has done that one as well. Have you seen one of these crazy Carvana auto Carvana, vending machines? You know machines? what? I have seen. I have seen them. They're, uh, they're, they're pretty unique. Uh, really just kind of a fascinating way of buying a car. I don't know if it's going to work long term, but it, it's definitely uh, definitely unique. Well, it seems like our option paper was kind of along that same tip as well, not exactly feeling the love. Last week, listeners, exactly a week ago on the 11th, we profiled here on the show Carvana, of course, ticker symbol CVNA, uh, trading today, 59.34. Remember that level, it's going to come into play. In a little bit, but we profiled last week. This is the name that's kind of been all over the place. They are, of course, the aforementioned. If you haven't seen one of these, they're kind of crazy listeners. They're about, you know, maybe four or five story tall glass towers, effectively. That can hold, they probably have a, each floor can probably hold five or six cars around and they go up. So it's probably like 30, 40 cars in this thing, not that many. And maybe there's more in a lot nearby, but there's, that's some in the, in the vending machine. Then you go, you, you do your negotiation, you buy a car, they give you a giant oversized novelty token you put it in the machine you pull the lever and your car comes down the vending machine it's it sounds like something out of a out of a fairy tale or a sci-fi novel but it's real and it's interesting and it makes me want to go buy a used car just just to see this machine in action uh, but of course and that has not all been uh, smiles here a year ago they were trading about 45 and a half so a bit shy of where they are right now they got up to about 67 and then they sold off again back that was in that was in September and then they sold off again to about 32, 31 and change back in February. Then rallied again all the way up to about 75. That's pretty much their close to their 52 week high. 76.85 is their actual 52 week high. Then they kind of been uh, selling off again and kind of vacillating in around this 60s, mid 60s range. And now breaking through the 60 handle to the downside. And that is worthy of note because a week ago we came on here and profiled someone loving themselves some puts to the tune of. The July 60 puts, so these are going out pretty much tomorrow. So at the time this went up, this only had a week. So this was a weekly trade, listeners. 5,000 of the July 60 puts going up for 45 cents. These things were 30 cents at 45 when the trade went up. And this was opening over there on the Amex. So someone gobbling up that offer 5,000 times. And looks like they were pretty happy and pretty well-timed as a result here. The stock off over 10% now since that trade went up. It was trading... Not quite 68, like 67, 66 and change at the time that this trade went up. Actually, it was 66 and a quarter when this trade went up. And go figure, these puts looking pretty good right now. They were still open as of this morning. Let me pull up a real quick, let's do a quick little scan here. Let's, uh, let's invoke our friend, the, the flow master. Let's see if his trade alert system can alert us of any good trades out here in for size out here. Oh, yeah, the July 60 puts are trading today. Go figure. But coming into this morning, uh, they were still open to the tune of about 8,000 uh, with about a day and change to go. They were trading for about a buck this morning. Uh, they're trading for a buck. They traded 708 times for a buck 55. Go figure on the bid. It looks like someone trying to take a few of these bad boys off the tape here. Uh, looks like, yeah, it looks like a decent number have, uh, have traded so far today. Let's see how many total. Total of that trade is 500, but I think there's more. It looks like about 1,200 have traded so far today, and these are still open. Yeah, worth noting, after we profiled this trade last week, 6,300 total went up on the day, and 1,600 went up a couple days later, 16th, actually, a couple days ago. So these things have still been trading. So the open interest got up to about 8,000 on these bad boys. Someone was really liking themselves this, uh, this 60 strike 
And it worked out. 45 cents up to roughly a buck 50 or so right now on these bad boys. And they are still open in the stock, obviously, through that 60 line right now, uh, down to about 59.20 off a of buck 80 today alone. So, Mr. Meatball, this appears to be some very short term, very well timed paper. What say you on these? I guess someone not liking the, the auto vending machine, sir. I guess not, but it really pretty well timed. Uh, nice little, nice little dip over a couple of day period. And it just shows you how, you know, when you do some analysis and realize that, oh, you know, maybe the stock might drop, uh, that you can make a lot of money fast. Plus the vol went way up. Yeah. That was kind of fascinating thing to me too, was the vol kind of maintained persistence and then shot up, which is uh, interesting. Mm-hmm. So that kind of, he had a double whammy working in his favor because these puts should have come in a little bit and just from erosion. And they really did in a lot just because of a, it moved in his favor and b the vol helping to undo a lot of that erosion. So we had a nice little double whammy here, which is, which is unusual. Usually you'll see these puts eroding, but the stock moves, and he'll still make money on them, particularly with, particularly with today's move because we're through the 60 handle. Uh, but that erosion will take a lot of the joy out of it. But not seeing that. These ones have maintained pretty firm. So this was a fairly interesting, fairly well-timed trade. It seemed like some of them are coming off today. We'll see if our friend uh, keeps the love alive, or maybe he wants to... Get short the 60 strike. We shall see. Maybe he was a size underlying holder, and he's out at 60. Uh, So we shall see. Either way, these bad boys still open, even though some trading today, not all of them, but not by a long shot. Looks like about maybe 10% of the OI so far has changed hands. We'll keep an eye on this bad boy, though, and see if uh, if he is done or if there's more to go. Carvana, car vending machines, not exactly feeling the love today. Let's see if our next one can uh, can feel the love. Oh, this is... uh, well, this one in a while. This is Skechers. Skechers. They of the formerly ladies sneakers. Now kind of everybody's sneakers and shoes manufacturers here. And let's see. A year ago, this trading today, of course, SKX, ticker symbol, trading right about 35 bucks, up about 40 cents. So decent day for them, a little over 1%. A year ago, they were trading 32 and change. And then they sold off exactly the next day. So obviously, probably around some, uh, some earnings. Uh, earnings are today, actually. Yeah, so this is the earnings time. And they sold off last week after the earnings down to 33. And they kind of stayed in that range for a while. And then they got down up to 30 again in November and then back down to 26. And then by Christmas Eve, they hit a, their nadir of around 21 and a half. So not looking good for them. Then like the rest of the market, they kind of just turned around in a rush, including it looks like in their earnings in February, they gapped up from 27 and a half up to about 32 and a half. So a good little run for them. And they kind of stayed up in that th- low 30s range for a while. And then they kind of sold off again back in May down to about 27 and a half. And they've kind of been doing this 27 and a half to about 34 and a half dance for a little while now. And they're back up on the upper end of that swing, up to about a little north of 34 and a half, 34.82 right now. Uh, so let's see what we saw here. They have earnings after the bell. Oh, yeah, more July papers. So this is going out tomorrow. So this is a straight up earnings play, listeners. So pay attention to this one because it's only got a day or so. It's not like one we got. Two year puts are in. We'll know right, right away if this guy was right or if he was wrong. We got the Skechers July 30 and a half puts. So about four bucks out of the money as of right now. Going up for 90 cents on the Amex. This is opening. There were 60 cents at 90. So taking up that offer almost 4,000 times, 3,998 times. As I mentioned, this is a pre earnings trade. They have earnings after the bell. Let's look, look really quickly and see. I have some of these move reports. Let's see if they have uh, SKX on. I do, actually. They were pri- they, at the time of this report, they were about 34 and a half, so pretty close to where they are right now. They were t- pricing in nearly 19%. Wow. Eight, this is actually the richest implied vol we're seeing on this report here. Uh, they passed, though. They've earned it. They've moved 16 and a half percent on past moves. So Skechers, a mover, a bit of a stealth mover. Not what we talk about a lot here on the show, but Skechers. It's got some vol baked in, and uh, I guess like our friend here, this four handles and change, this could this could happen given what they're pricing in out here in the marketplace. Mr. Meatball, we got another short-term, short-duration earnings downside vol love play. Uh, what do you think about these puts in Skechers, sir? Are you, are you a Skechers fan in general? You know, I'm I uh, I'm not. Uh, you know, for a long time, I, I always wore those ones that allegedly made my butt look better. But then when I found out that that was just a, 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 a hoax, I, uh, I said, Fed is Skechers forever. And so now I, uh, I, I've never uh, since or will ever wear Skechers again. 
Was there oh, actually that, that, a, was there actually a hoax around those shoes and Skechers? Well, the, the the shoes the the whole thing was these shoes allegedly made your thighs and butt uh, get in better shape while you were walking, and I think they found that to be statistically untrue. <laughs> so I don't know if it was a hoax as much as it was false advertising. This is why I love having you on the show. You're very much clued into that uh, the the bleeding edge of the fashionista movement, shall we? Oh say. yeah. Well, you know I. It was interesting. I, I said, I'm going to do two things to see, uh, as my control to see if these sketches are going to work. Every day, I'm going to eat a whole cheese pizza, and then I'm going to walk a couple miles in these sketches things. And lo and behold, my butt actually got bigger. You know, something to be said for controlled studies. So at least you had the diligence <laughs> to maintain yes. that control. You know, you got to keep the pizza up. You can't just do it once. You got to do it every no. day. So, no, exactly. So, ballyhoo to you on your, uh, your diligence. <laughs> yes. in, in, in pizza. But yeah, these look like they're uh, they're making a bet that uh, today's uh, aftermarket announcement may not be as great as they're looking for because this thing reports tonight. Yeah, that seems to be the case. I'm going to put these in the in the file. I, I kind of like some of these little bit nearer term plays. Yeah, that's, that's why too. earnings is kind of fun. Me we too. can ch- we can check up on these pretty quickly and see if they're working out or not. So it's kind of nice. Sometimes you have to wait six months to see if a trade works out. These are much little, much closer to home. So we'll see how these bad boys work. I'll put these in the to be watch category. Come back to them next week, listeners, and see how our friend did here. Rolling the dice in a little after hours on Skechers. So so far we got one guy rolling the dice and knocking it out of the park, getting about a three x pop for his puts. We got another guy looking to follow suit on that. He needs a big move in this bad boy for these to pay off. Remember, this is one day ninety cents. These are four handles out of the money, listeners. So that. All of that 90 cents is gone if he's wrong on this bad boy pretty quickly. So this is very much a binary option trade here. Uh, so interesting. We'll keep an eye on this one. Meanwhile, let's, let's draw it to a close with this one. This is one of the Rock Lobster's favorite styles of trade. I can't speak to this ticker. I haven't really talked about this one before. Eventbrite. You guys know them. They are the ones you get all those tickets for. If you go to like a webinar or something like that, you get an Eventbrite leak. Uh, so you guys have seen this before. Ticker symbol EB. Uh, 16 and a half uh, today, up about 20 cents uh, on, the, on the docket here. And let's see, a, a year ago they were trading, well, they had an interesting, they were trading 23, and obviously their earnings time, because they popped up literally the next day to 36 and a half. So <laughs> 13 handle swing over the course of a day, a 50% swing pretty much for this name. So a little bit of vol here in this Eventbrite name. Who'd have thunk it? Online ticketing. And event management would be the, the volatile place that it is. This chart looks like a biotech. And then it sold off again back to about 26 and change in October. So in a span of a few months, it went from 23 up to almost uh, about nearly 40, 38, and then back down to 26. And then it kind of stayed in this 26, got that about 34 again, and kind of sold off kind of 34 down to like 29 or 28 range or so for until about March when it sold off again. Looks like earnings were not that good. I hit about 32 and a half and promptly sold off to about 19 a couple of weeks later after, over the course next night, a couple of sessions later uh, after those earnings announcements. So big sell off and it kind of hung around there. Then it sold off again to 17 and now it's down to 16 and a half. So it's very much close to that 52 week low, which is 1530 right now, about a buck and change north of that right now. So let's see what we got. Looks like someone deciding. This far and no farther here for EB, deciding, you know, we're at the bottom of that 52-week range. I don't think it's going to blow through it. Let's hit me some puts to the tune of the AUG 15s, going up 3,885 times for 60 cents, right on the bid. These were 60 cents at 80 when this trade went up. This went up over there on the SIBO. This was opening. They do have earnings in this cycle. Earnings are the 7th of August. So taking advantage of the earnings to get a little bit of earnings juice on there. So 60 cents on the 15 puts that puts them down to 1440 on the downside here, which puts them about a, almost a buck below the 52 week low. Not terrible, not super maybe exciting. Mr. Mr. Meatball, does this one blow up your skirts while you're wearing your sketches over there, sir? No, this is uh, not one that had caught my radar, but uh, yeah, the paper pretty much looks like, hey, this is at a 52 week low, and if I can take delivery below 15, I will. And um, and I'll and if I'm and if not, I'll collect some income. So they're maybe saying the fireworks are over, not necessarily a uh, it's going to pop back, but uh, it seems to be at least mildly bullish for uh, the underlying. 
Mildly bullish indeed. You know what? We're gonna we're gonna watch this one too. Got to wait a little bit longer for this one, but I think we'll have a have a better sense in a few weeks of whether this bad boy is working out, whether this line is holding, or whether our friend here is gonna own himself some stock at fourteen and change. Meanwhile, though, it's time to keep on rolling. It's time to get some of your questions. You guys got some epic treatises. Let's get to those in the mail block. It's time to take your seat on the All Star Panel as we read your emails, tweets. Facebook messages, website comments, and much more. It's time for The Mail Block. All right, everybody. Let's dive into your questions. Really quickly, we asked you that silly one on last show. It was Prime Day on Monday. We asked you, are you you buying anything on Prime Day? Yes. On Amazon, yes. On other outlets or no. And 60% of you said no. And then 40% of you said yes, but on Amazon, no love for other outlets. No going to a Walmart or a Costco or whatever to buy something or Best Buy. Nope. You're Amazon or bust, it sounds like, in our audience, which is interesting. Uh, all right here. Let's start off with this one. Uncle Mike, you have been you and your collar love and SLV have been invoked by a listener. So let's, let's get to it like this. Thomas A. Weber, PhD. We have quite the, quite the educated crowd here. Saying hi ho SLV away. <laughs> Clearly, he's a listener. He, uh, he 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 knows how we roll here. He says, Uncle Mike. See that he writes it straight to you. Doesn't even forget about the rest of us. Uncle Mike, what option strategy do you suggest for SLV with a thirty day bullish outlook? The out of the money options are usually cheap, but the range is tight. Is it time to ride SLV into the sunset or take SLV to the glue factory? <laughs> I like this guy. I like this Thomas A. Weber PhD. Sir, you fit right in here with the All Star panel. So, Uncle Mike, clearly a longtime listener here. He knows how we roll. What do you what do you think? Glue factory or sunset? And how do you like to approach it, sir? I know I know you haven't been doing much in your two year collar, maybe the thirty day a little bit more active. Yeah, with SLV with what's happening right now, um, I think it's if you are bullish on it, I think if you're short term bullish like that over the course of thirty days. I think going at doing an in the money option, uh, buying an in the money call would be the way to go. If you buy uh, a thirty day, um, just looking here on my chain. If you look look at the twenty nine days out, you can buy an August fourteen call for a buck twenty, and that gives you pretty much ninety percent leverage with only a few pennies of uh, time value on it. So I think that if you're looking to do a lever to play on SLV. Um, for that time frame, I think that would probably be the best way to go personally. Uh, in terms of my opinion on it, I'm looking at more of a long-term thing. It still needs to move a little bit more for me to make any adjustments with my collars or things like that. So uh, I have a very wide collar going on it. So it's still, uh, yes, it has moved, but it has not moved enough uh, to really make it so that it's uh, enough of an, it's not adjustment worthy for me. So it's not, uh, it's starting but uh, not quite yet. So in terms of whether we should take it to the glue factory or uh, whatever we want to do with it, for now, uh, I'm just going to kind of watch it and uh, ride that horse. Ride that horse in deed, sir. I don't know, Mr. Uh, Colin or Mr. Rock, Mr. Uncle, uh, Uncle. I said Uncle Mike or Mr. Meeple. Any of you have any, uh, any thoughts here on SLV before we keep rolling? I mean, the implied volatility is really high, so if you're going to go along call or something like that, you have to do it as a spread, um, you know, or some sort of calendar type of thing where you, you're selling expensive implied volatility in front of it because, um, you know, that the higher you go, the higher the curvature. And so there, there's some opportunity to build some inexpensive spreads, but I, I could not uh, – I. In no way would I ever just go outright long a call in this thing because the implied volatility is through the roof. Indeed. So, yeah, the metals vol all of a sudden. Been uh, something to watch. Who'd have thunk that a few months ago when pretty much most metals vol was in the toilet and had stayed there for the better part of a year, if not longer. And it, whenever it caught a bid, it would just vanish. But, yeah, metals vol is something interesting to look at. Again, maybe we'll get to more of that on Twifo in a little bit, listeners. Stay tuned here. Let's see. we got... You guys are all over the place on your – I love it. I love the way you – the direction you guys take us in every show. We can do a whole listener show and just to see uh, the madness that it wrought. But it's, it's fun nonetheless. We got um, – oh, these are the – this is timely. This is the uh, – those Carvana puts uh, we have here. Yanks. Yanks 953 chiming in. After our last show, 
on la- or actually this is a week ago I guess because this yeah this is we were talking about those puts we just analyzed the Carvana puts remember we were talking about the July 60 puts and someone gobbling up a ton of those for a week he chimed in at, during the show and said hey I like that I he actually grabbed the Aug 60 puts for some more time instead but he loves the play well Yanks Steaks and uh, drinks are on you, it sounds like, because these puts are looking pretty good right now. We just profiled the July puts. The guy's got about a three-bagger on those right about now. I don't know where you got in on yours, but I'm going to guess at least 2x on these puts if you're still in them. Looking at them right now, come into the end of the show here. They're at about 560 at 6 bucks, uh, so they're looking pretty good out here. Well done on your part. See, sometimes it, it pays to pay attention to the smart money. We say we don't always follow it. you got to kind of put your own spin on it. He did it to the case of giving himself a little bit more time. A week is, is kind of nuts, and I'm glad he kind of realized that. So it sounds like he did pretty well. Let us know, Yanks, 953, how that worked out, where you got out of it. Uh, because it looks like that one, uh, that one, see, definitely covers the cost of listening to this show, which is free. So well done there, Mr. or Mrs. Yanks, 953. More regular listeners chiming in. We got our old good friend, J3 Dingle. He sent us the link, and um, it was to – oh, you know what? I don't have it here, but it was to uh, that uh, – what was it? Eric something, Solwell, something like that uh, Democratic congressman who dropped out of uh, the presidency. He never really got much traction, and he chimed in. He says he bets it was the UVXY position. And if you remember, uh, J3 is the one who wrote in a few months ago and said that he saw uh, – back in May – he said he saw on Bloomberg one of the 20-plus Democrats running for president owns UVXY for size in his portfolio. That alone should be disqualifying. Apparently, it was that same candidate because he's now out of the race. So I guess we can all breathe a sigh of relief that someone who has uh, a size amount of a neutered Val product in his portfolio uh, is not going to be the commander-in-chief. Because really, you know, SVXY, UVXY, you're still slinging those. But we, d- we talked about that on our Vol Views recently. There is still a market for some of those, but uh, you got to kind of know what you're getting into. And it's certainly nowhere near as appealing as it once was. I don't know, Mr. Meatball, you think uh, owning size UVXY, is that uh, should that be a disqualifier in and of itself for the presidential officer? I believe I may have tweeted at that. Uh, I think I tweeted at, at uh, Congressman Swalwell that uh, – you know, feel free to DM me and I can explain to you how your uh, UVXY position is working and why you should uh, consider unwinding it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Take it off post haste. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I hope his portfolio does better than his presidential campaign uh, got asked, but uh, that was uh, probably not one of his better uh, positions. Not one of his better positions didn't exactly light up the tape there on, uh, of course, 20 plus contenders. <laughs> At this point, most of them throwing in their hat in the ring, probably just trying to raise their own profile. And uh, I guess it works for for a degree here. All right, we got, let's see, more comments here. Oh, here's a good question. Uh, Momo Rob. <laughs> Momo Rob. He says, I was wondering, do you give courses on how to trade options? Well, I personally do not, Mr. Momo Rob. I'm busy here giving all you guys this great free content here on the network all the time. So that's where I live. That's where I hang my hat. Uh, but I happen to know somebody who does. Mr. Meatball, would you know somebody by any chance who gives courses on how to trade options? Could you refer someone? Uh, yeah, me. So if you want to learn how to t- uh, trade options, shoot me an email, marketoptionpit.com, and, I'll, uh, I'll, and uh, we'll set up a time to chat. I'd be happy to teach you how to do all this stuff. Uh, yes, so there you go, marketoptionpit.com, or hit up the Rock Lobster, Andrew at optionpit.com. Yeah. They, will, uh, they will take you to the dark side of options. Oh, it's Eric Swalwell. That's the one. Uh, he's the one who had all that, uh, all that size <laughs> SPXY in his portfolio. All right, so we got some epic ones here. We'll have to find some time to work some of these in. These are good. Keep those questions coming. We love it. You guys are all over the place, and that kind of keeps us on our toes. We like it, so keep them coming. Uh, meanwhile, we've got uh, split wing flies. We've got epic treatises on iron condors and SPX, Greeks, you name it, all of the above. But we've got to keep on rolling to our final segment. It is time to go around the block. It's time to tell you what we'll be watching on our trading screens until the next episode. It's time for Around the Block. All right, listeners, a lot popping off here this week after the bell today and coming into next week. Uh, let's go back to the hot seat. Colin, sir, what do you keep an eye on for the rest of this week into this weekend? We can even cheat 
and go into next week if you want for what's lighting up your radar. What are you watching in the coming week or so over there at Fidelity? Yeah, it's it's. I know it's going to be a little bit of a boring answer, but it's it's really what I'm watching. I mean, my focus is going to be on Microsoft after the bell today. Uh, it's going to be really interesting, especially with all all the uh, focus on tech and what's going on with uh, you know that little. Apparently, there's a little uh, disagreement over in France with the taxation and and whatnot. But it'll, it'll be interesting to see with them coming out with earnings. Uh, I want to see the reaction there, um, and then as well next week as the earnings keep rolling, it's going to see. Uh, you know, are are these earnings really fading? Uh, and see how that impact goes. So, uh, a little bit of a boring answer, but uh, really, in, that's that's what I'm going to be watching um, moving forward, as well as uh, things that we've been kind of lately been watching is uh, a weird movement is is watching the transports, the Dow transports, and uh, that the uh, regular Dow and how that reacts. Because uh, interestingly enough, we've been watching that the last couple of days. It's been an interesting movement out of them. Uh, so to see see if that uh, that's going to continue moving forward as well. Yeah, you know, Microsoft's been a fascinating one to watch. I've said it before. They were for a while, about a decade, better part of a decade, they were kind of lost money. And so they were one of the best premium rights in the business because they would always price in just a little bit of juice, not a ton, but a little bit. And they would never deliver on it. So you could always bank on keeping most of what you sold. So it was a great deal. Then about a couple of years ago, they have started tweaking their business a bit, changing it up, new CEO and everything. And all of a sudden, they're a different beast. And then sometimes they blow the doors off it anymore. So it's not quite the reliable premium right that it used to be. We'll keep an eye on it after the bell and see if, if they're back to the old days or if they're back to the new, trim, vigorous, vibrant Microsoft that is aggressive, shall we say, on earnings day. Uncle Mike, same question for you, sir. What is on your radar here going into the weekend? Well, watching to see uh, today if silver can make a, a new high for the year. That's one thing on the radar. <clears throat> of course, watching earnings, watching Microsoft. Uh, watching also, just kind of, and not necessarily uh, this week, well, not this week, but wanting to see the reaction of the Fed in terms of if they follow through with this rate cut. And uh, it's not too early to start thinking about non-farm coming up in August. So watching a lot of things, uh, but more waiting than watching at this point. More waiting than watching, indeed. And last but not least, Mr. Meatball, sir, what are you keeping an eye on going into the weekend? Well, we got earnings, 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 and more earnings. And that's what's going to drive my what I'm looking at in the overall market. And, uh, you know, notably Microsoft tonight and uh, at the currently, I believe, the biggest company in the world. So uh, that could absolutely be a driver of, uh, of kind of what's to come next week. That could indeed that could indeed. Unfortunately, that music means nothing more to come, at least from this show, listeners. But don't worry. We got you covered. If you're listening live, take a beverage break, relax. Actually, maybe we'll pipe in a little bit of faith. I think we'll pipe in a little bit. You're talking like in softy here. I do believe we actually have a, uh, a, uh, a breakdown in options playbook for some earnings trades on Microsoft. So maybe we'll pipe one of those there in for you, and we'll be back in exactly 35 minutes to talk uh, commodity, vol, options, skew, all that good stuff with uh, the head of research over there at CME. But before we do that, let's go back around the horn. Let's go back the way we came. Let's start with uh, Mr. Meatball. Sir, if folks are intrigued, maybe like they're like our friend there who wrote in, he wants to learn himself about a little bit of them, their options. Where should they go? What should they do, sir? Come visit us at optionpit.com and follow us on YouTube. Uh, our YouTube uh, handle is Option Pit. Uh, I give you I may, uh, every day at uh, nine fifteen central. I give you my uh, my five minutes to think about on the day today. I discussed how uh, I ignored the clouds and thus I got wet. <laughs> there you go. That's the with that and the uh, Skechers won't help your butt. Well, the Skechers won't help your butt. <laughs> I did a, a diatribe on people who stand on escalators versus people who walk on them. Uh, we've we've hit a bunch. This is gold, listeners. You gotta get over to Option Pit on YouTube. Make it happen. Just, just gold mine. Get out there. Get out there. Oh. You're missing out. In fact, you should be watching it. Don't watch it right now because you, you're watching this. But afterwards, of course, consume it voraciously and get on over to OptionPit.com. Sign up for some of those webinars and those courses you guys love so much. And Uncle Mike, sir, if I want someone to sit there, maybe on boring days like today, and watch the market for me, so I don't have to. Where should I go? What should I do, sir? Well, by all means, say charleswealth.com. And uh, on boring days, watch the stuff that's exciting. Silver is going. 
That is exciting. But nonetheless, if you'd like me to watch it for you or discuss some things you may or may not need, feel free to contact me and you can find my information on my website. There you go. StCharlesWealth.com is the place to go. And last but certainly not least, Colin, sir, you talk about what people are lighting up over there in the realm of fidelity. If they want to kick the tires for themselves, maybe reach out to you or Trey or The Last Emperor or anybody else over there. Brian, uh, where should they go? What should they do, sir? Yeah, so they could always visit us on uh, fidelity.com slash options, uh, detailing all the services that are available, uh, including the tools to help them with their analysis for their option trades. We also have uh, educational resources through our website, as well as online virtual classes where they can proactively ask questions and attend those, whether it's option-based or reading charts. Uh, So at any point in time, you would like to have a discussion, whether based on an option strategy or just your trading strategy in general, don't hesitate to call Fidelity at 877-907-4429. Ask to speak with the Trading Strategy Desk, or you can even ask for me by name. We're here to help you out in any way that we can. Give him a call. Ask for Colin. It'll make his day, and it'll keep that last emperor from getting too big of a head because he's been on a lot, and he's got a cool nickname. So call up, ask for Colin, and then he could he could rub it in the last emperor's face. Remember, Fidelity.com slash options is the place to go to kick the tires and light the fires. And on behalf of Colin and the Greasy Meatball and Uncle Mike and, indeed, myself, I thank all of you for downloading, streaming, subscribing, for joining live, for sending in such awesome questions. you got so many here. These are great. Uh, so keep them coming. We love them. If you don't get a chance to squeeze them on this show, maybe we'll squeeze them in somewhere else. We answer all your questions, however they come in. Don't worry. But uh, we only have a certain amount of time on this show to get to some of these epic, epic questions. But keep them coming. I think going to keep them coming. We'll keep some good stuff coming for you. You can listen to a little bit of Iron Condors in Microsoft around earnings for the next few minutes, and then I'll be back in exactly 30 minutes to talk some commodity ball and skew and all that other fun good stuff on Twifo and otherwise listen on the podcast we'll see you back here tomorrow for Ball Views and then next week for more of the Option Block You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network the home of the Options Podcast for more quality options programs visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options. Facebook.com slash the options insider or via questions at the options insider.com. The Options Insider Radio Network is sponsored by Fidelity Investments. At Fidelity, you'll always get a great value for your options trades. And with powerful investing tools that provide clear next steps, plus independent research and a wide range of investment types, we can help you make better trading decisions. Learn more about options trading with Fidelity at fidelity.com backslash options. Options trading entails significant risk and is not appropriate for all investors. Certain complex option strategies carry additional risk. Before trading options, contact Fidelity Investments by calling 800-544-5115 to receive a copy of the characteristics and risks of standardized options. Fidelity Brokerage Services, LLC, member NYSC SIPC.